Hello everyone, it's your favorite FGC VTuber. Here to give you guys some advice on PC settings for Mortal Kombat, uh, the best settings, and also some mini notes. Uh, there'll be timestamps down below for very specific issues or things regarding the game itself. I mean, yeah, just go down below. Anyways, we'll go ahead and start. And um, when you go to Mortal Kombat at the Steam page, and you scroll down, obviously there is the system requirements and it'll tell you all, you know, bitrate, whatever. Long story short, all you really need to know is that you have anything that's modern, you should be pretty fine as long, even the three ones. But for me personally, this is, uh, this guide is going to be more geared towards those who have at least what I would consider mid-range specs. For example, my computer actually is, is a equivalent to a AMD Ryzen 5, uh, the AM3600X. And I have a GTX 1070. So about the mid-range, I know it says 1080. So as long as, again, as far as graphics cards, you know, somewhere between between a 1060 and a 1080 you'll be solid right um I, longer story short basically i would say is what really matters more is that you have a cpu that can do at least the minimum in my opinion 3 3.5 gigahertz or 4 gigahertz highly recommended and a gpu that has vram of 8 6 will also be fine the uh, higher the better obviously and for those of you who are curious exactly if you're a veteran um pc player then okay you get this right away but for those who don't know uh go here i'm going to show you exactly how to find your specs you can also go to settings that's another way but there's a reason why i want you guys to do this first go to task manager you guys see task manager um go down to the bottom left just type in task manager and then it'll pop up uh, the eight specific ones. There's two reasons for this. So you can check your specs and stuff. So I can further explain some of the things and the reasons why there are certain issues with the game. So here you around have these more or less these kinds of settings. Like of course for CPU, because I had this problem. So apparently Mortal Kombat's a really CPU intensive game for some weird reason. Because again, I have a GTX 1070 and it's actually overclocked. I didn't overclock it. And it was at like 3.5 gigahertz and it really wouldn't go any past further. And I know it could do higher. I overclocked it at four gigahertz and it did so good. Now it's going into the next part that you might be having issues with. Uh, it's also so the RAM is make sure that uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM is obviously should be enough. But here's the reason why I say you should hopefully if you have 8 gigabytes, it's going to be a struggle. Don't have any other applications on. I do recommend you having 12 or 16 for sure for this game. But the main thing I want to get is if you're having hiccup issues with, say, like the cutscenes, like I was having this myself. I might put a clip here to show well, princess. you fight well. I'm crazy. Why is it doing those hitches? Like it's and an NVMe SSD dog. You should not be doing that. But that is actually seems to be a RAM issue, not so much a CPU issue. And the thing with that is, is that the RAM is actually too slow. So it's not about not having enough. Is this actually too slow? As you can see, here's an example of what more or less uh, the RAM was at. It would go anywhere between like 26 to 24. Uh, I, I, long story short, I tweaked it a bit. I actually went into my motherboard and overclocked it or had it to where it was properly supposed to be set at mind you this is a ddr4 ram for those of you may know whatever there's different generations but if you do have an older one uh i do recommend go looking at overclock guide uh just go into there and do the regular os tuning and then put into the motherboard like mx whatever you'll be fine but make sure that at the very least your ram sure it is not at 26 i mean 26 is fine but try to get it to at least be 32 huh, 32,000, 3200 whatever or at least 300 and it, that'll immediately help with hiccups so if you're having remember if you're having cpu problems or if you're having like frame rate issues something it's a cpu thing if it's uh you're having hiccups it's a ram thing now let's actually get into the settings of the game uh, explaining all that so again i want a good reason i want to get all that all the way because it might not even be actually a graphical issue and this game is really particular because it's not that hard to see okay you could just tune on the settings or whatever but anyways is actually getting to the core of the view this is my specific setup right here as you guys see it is i'm actually having this at 1080 so no high settings and it's obviously custom uh i set the fps so this is what you would normally want to have it if you can turn vsync off if you want and the upscaling method is on i will cover that that'll be its own topic later on but the optimal settings this is what you would want to have it at actually this is my personal setting so if, again if you have a very modern cpu and you have met the criteria or whatever i would recommend these are your optimal settings having texture quality at very high and the so traffic filtering at 16 you can set the shadow quality to high or medium on you depending depending um, how much it may struggle. It does make a slight difference, not the biggest difference in the world. Visually, I guess it depends how I would say for shadows is, um, uh, this applies more to people than it does objects or running, but if you feel it, the image might be a bit flat, um, then I would say do it a bit at high, cause it does, it adds a little bit more shadows to your start, but not that much. It's more so for your characters and high, and no one's really trying to stare at their, the shadows for the characters. But if you really want to help a lot, definitely just turn it all the way off. People who don't care for shadows, me personally I do. Uh, I say 100% turn off bloom. I think it's not, 
the best set. I mean, Mortal Kombat particularly doesn't do a really good job of it, in my opinion. It's not like Gears of War 4. But yeah, just straight up, well, one of the biggest settings I recommend you 100% turn off is Bloom. It is taxing on the GPU and the CPU. And it doesn't really make all that much of a difference, in my opinion. Ambient inclusion, I think it's an acquired taste, if I would say. Some people say just completely turn off. For me personally, again, if you, um, it helps with the environment. It gives it almost a shadow. A good example, like, you know how there's shadows, obviously, under a rock kind of thing. It does that. So it gives it, gives, uh, objects in the background more death and whatever i mean it's whatever you can again tweak it yourself but for me personally doesn't make that big of a difference thing of if i would say here's my thing i would rather recommend you keep ambient inclusion on and shadows low than shadows high and ambient inclusion off that's just my personal take because like i said it applies more to people and the people doesn't do too much i mean you could have it at low they'll have shadows they'll look kind of meh whatever but like as long as the shadows there your mind will be like all right but you know if there's no shadows in the background like in rocks it, it'll will you will notice it so for me personally it, if you think it's too distracting turn ambient inclusion on and put shadows down all the way down anyways reflections don't really matter that much i'm gonna be honest like there's very few instances of you being looking maybe if you're playing the cutscene sure but reflect 100 on another setting i highly recommend you just turn off they don't even need it and then for anti-aliasing i would say this is on a per user basis it's recommended i mean the even thing it tells you but i think it was fxaa like it is softer um me personally i didn't really like the look of it i personally use taa uh, if you put ta and fxaa i don't know it just doesn't look that good so that one's personal taste but if you want the good best look and performance at the same time highly recommend uh taa now for particle density i would highly recommend high it's a good setting um um, very high is very demanding actually cpu and gpu as well same with bloom but i feel the game it is a thing that is very nice you know again this is my thing but highly recommend high if you want to turn it down to normal that's also fine also a thing to note the default settings as you will see it'll be you see on the right it says oh default high and it'll tell you what those actually default so that means that that's what the game is set i don't really recommend you have any of these settings at ultra um set ultra usually doesn't make that much of a difference like in the slightest um do you guys here tell me if you guys can notice the difference between this is on the right all the settings at the high and on the left my settings that i and tell me if you can really notice a difference but also i should just have the charts up there and the performance which going back to that's why i had you guys set that in the beginning going back to the task manager so you can actually pop it up on the left because i know some you may or may not have like you know xperia or you know msi afterburner you don't know what that is but very simple have it and up there you can see in real time how much these settings are actually having an effect on your performance and that's how i gauge this by the way i mess with this a lot right so there you go hopefully this should be a bit useful um it's for you lower ender users if you're have, still having problems um what i do recommend if you're having specific problems like i said the cpu was the biggest problem again reiterate make sure you check that all your stuff is good this is i have a modern pc and i had to actually over clock stuff to make sure it ran perfectly fine because beforehand i actually had the settings slightly lowered and i was still having issues like i said i had the hiccups that was obviously solved to the ram but now that i have you know my cpu overclocked as well i was able to turn up the settings a wee bit more and everything just feels a lot more responsive right because i would have problems when i'm in mid fights but anyway as far as like texture quality like if you're having vram issues i do highly recommend for my lower end but texture quality is something to normal it doesn't make the biggest difference i mean visually i think normal is where you do take a hit but if you're having problems with your gpu 1000 percent um i would say lower particle uh, density it'll also help a wee bit with the gpu it's a you know double whammy like i said remember bloom completely turn off reflection also as well there i don't think they do that much um particle density can really mess with both gpu and cpu i think slightly more gpu uh of course if you're still having vram issues uh change the texture quality and you will see it in your task manager how much i say pay attention to how much vram it takes up that's what i want to stress is how much of your memory is being taken up so again if you're like a six gigabyte card user i think normal is going to be your go-to for sure so you don't and then also this also applies to your resolution uh 1080p is basically a month now getting a bit much if you're still having problems and you're let's say a gtx 1060 user um trying to play maybe 1440p like i usually try to do and maybe you've even lowered everything to let's say normal and even have anti-traffic filtering to eight and you're still running into issues um i do recommend and this is for again remember for graphics cards user going to the resolution style um upscaling filter that i mentioned earlier now what you want to go is to upscaling method and turn it to on now we'll have two different settings personally i set it to the second one uh the spatial is whatever i mean here are all the options i'm showing you right here right but yeah, these are all the options if you have an amd card i highly recommend using the amd one for some reason there's an nvidia one it mentions but I, my i have an nvidia card and it's not popping up but that's weird anyways go here i recommend the temporal upscaling method now you can tweak with this as much as you want so i will say basically what it does is it takes a lower resolution and then upscales it so it can go up to your resolution. there is some artifacting i do recommend you put the upscaling sharpness all the way if you want it to be a bit sharper this is something that you're gonna have to do on a personal basis right uh 20 is the default now i normally have it at 100 but as you guys can see here 
here, I'll set it to half. That means half the resolution. That means you are rendering half of it. Now, the thing I will note is this will tax your CPU a wee bit. So if you're running, you know, like I say, a six gig card and you're already having problems with the with the GPU, again, you're going to notice this here in my example that I'm going to post up is that now your CPU starts to get even more taxed. So it's a it's a fine balance. Personally, I found that uh, at its best at any of you guys notice it, you see the artifact and you see exactly what I'm talking about, right? That's at half. So it, it looks OK. But if you set it to 100, which is where it basically upscales 1080 to 1080. I don't know exactly what's going on there. But as you can see, looks pretty good. Uh, only in the background, you can really notice some of the artifacting that I mentioned before. And as you notice, the CPU went down. But look at also the GPU that is being used up. I think it's slightly less than it would be normally if you did use, you know, the regular settings. So uh, it's weird. It, it, this is definitely a tweak by tweak basis. Um, I would highly recommend setting. If you want to see how the sharpness, sharpness is, I recommend putting the render scale at 100. Then messing with that to see where do you think it looks the nicest and then once you're done with setting with that to set for your performance and visual like i said it's a fine tweak where you know where your sweet spot is where it doesn't stress your cpu or gpu i would highly recommend you know tweaking and going into the benchmark i think 75 would be pretty good you know maybe 75 80 percent i think it's a fine balance again something again you guys can see the numbers where you want to see where they're both more or less even right where it's like 80 80 percent or 90 90 percent and uh yeah that should more or less cover uh the settings for mortal Kombat and everything you would need to know not to reiterate again this is remember i have a fairly not too modern. i guess it's old school by most patterns but remember a modern card a with eight gigabytes of vram it's a dtx 1070 so it's slightly above what i think most end users have and again, these are my settings. I actually have the texture quality at ultra because of the extra headroom because I am overclocking. But yeah, so again, this is for the settings for if you have a anything that's i5, you know, whether it's Intel or Ryzen. And of course, within the at least the last two generations. So, you know, DDR4 RAM, DDR3M also applies if you're a high end user. So if you have like top of the line Core i5, from DDR3 generation, you'll also be fine. But again, remember if you're having issues with your RAM, you may have to actually look into overclocking it or clocking into this proper. Go check out an entire, you, there's plenty of guides about how to overclock DRAM, you know, DDR RAM. Uh, so I can't stress this enough. And this game actually takes up more CPU than you think it would. So the two things that are very interesting about this game. So for us non-modern super PC users, the CPU and your RAM are oddly your biggest bottlenecks, not your GPU. But yeah, that'll do about this. Um, hopefully you guys found this super useful. I know this is a lot and you know, it's kind of all over the place. But like I said, I was having so many issues. Like I said, I had this at 3.5, uh, you know, with my semi new PC, I barely just got, and I'm like, it's a 1070. I'm like, it's not it's stressing the GPU a lot. Like my CPU was just not going above 3.5. And that was actually the biggest thing causing my FPS to not stay at a stable 60. By the way, you want this to be at a stable 60. You don't want 59 is okay, you know, but make sure you hit that 60 where you're playing on if story mode whatever maybe if it as long as it can hold it more or less but those jitters will get you mid fight and can probably screw you over but again hopefully you guys found this useful and uh yeah i'll catch you with uh more mortal Kombat content peace